Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on shoulder dystocia. The definition of shoulder dystocia is when there is impaction of the anterior shoulder of the baby against the symphysis pubis of the mother after the head has been delivered. It occurs when the breadth of the baby's shoulder is greater than the biparietal diameter of the head. And it is diagnosed when any of the obstetric maneuver is needed to release the baby's shoulder after gentle axial traction has failed. Shoulder dystocia is one of the most dreaded obstetric complications, as it is one of the primary causes of perinatal mortality and morbidity, and also maternal morbidity. So one must be prepared for the possibility of shoulder dystocia in all deliveries and have a prepared plan of management. The incidence varies, but it is around 6 in 1,000 cases. And shoulder dystocia cannot be prevented and it cannot be predicted, so one must always be ready. So let's take a look at some of the risk factors of shoulder dystocia. It can be divided into antipartum risk and also intrapartum risk. For antipartum risk, there are risk factors like macrosomia, maternal diabetes mellitus, previous history of shoulder dystocia, maternal obesity, and also induction of labor. Whereas for intrapartum risk, it can be due to prolonged first stage, secondary arrest, prolonged second stage, oxytoxin augmentation, or even assisted vaginal delivery. So what are some of the signs for early detection? One of the signs is the head bobbing sign, where the head is coming down towards the introitus with pushing, but then it retracts back between the contraction. Another sign is the turtle sign where the delivered head becomes tightly pulled back against the perineum. So let's take a look at the complications of shoulder dystocia. Maternal complications such as perineal trauma, uterine atony and then causing postpartum hemorrhage or also uterine rupture can occur. Whereas fetal complications include brachial plexus injury, clavicle or humerus fracture, neurological deficit or hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and it even death can occur. So how do we manage shoulder dystocia? This is the drill of management where the mnemonic is helper. H-E-L-P-E-R-R-R. -R -R. First is to call for help, either pediatrician, obstetrician, and also senior staff and nurse. Next is episiotomy. Net L is Mac Roberts maneuver for the legs, which I will explain more later. P is pressure where we apply suprapubic pressure. Enter using wood screw maneuver. Remove posterior arm. Roll patient over to hands and knees and repeat the above procedure starting from L. So now let's take a look at what they mean. First, the L stands for legs. It's done by Mac Roberts maneuver where we ask the patient to hyperflex the hips, abduct the hips and also flex the knees in the position shown in the picture. Next, we apply suprapubic pressure on the patient and the direction of pushing should be in the direction of where the baby is facing. Next is the wood screw maneuver. In this maneuver, the anterior shoulder is pushed towards the baby's chest and the posterior shoulder is pushed towards the baby's back, so making the baby's head facing the mother's rectum. This wood screw maneuver is only tried after the Mac Roberts maneuver and application of suprapubic pressure have been tried. Next is to deliver the posterior arm, where we flex the forearm at the elbow if the forearm is extended, and then deliver the arm by sweeping it across the chest and the face. Next step is ask the patient to roll over. This position is called Gaskin's maneuver. It is also called on all fours. So, after this, we repeat the above procedures from the Mac Roberts pro maneuver. If the above maneuvers are unsuccessful, all the maneuvers can make, be tried again, and the order where which maneuver comes first may be revised according to the doctor. So, if all the procedures fail, there are still some methods which include symphysiotomy by cutting the symphysis pubis to allow delivery of the anterior shoulder, clavicular fracture or cladotomy. 
which allows further adduction of the fetal shoulder, reduce the diameter of the shoulders, thus allowing delivery, and also Zavanelli maneuver, where we push the baby's head back into the uterus and proceed with emergency caesarean section. After the delivery, watch out for complications, counseling for both the patient and the partner, and documentation should be accurate and comprehensive, and it is important to document which fetal shoulder was anterior. That's all for this video. Thank you.